hey community um so last week i've been posting content around how to how uh, mulesoft rpa um, can help you build apm dashboards uh, which you see actually here in elastic kibana um, so today we are going to look into how to build that uh, specific bot to be able to really uh, get the data into Kibana, Elastic, or any other uh, databases. Um, and therefore, first of all, we go into uh, the RPA manager and let's quickly create a process which we are going to automate it. And then uh, later on, we are going to look at that specific uh, measurement uh, which you need to perform in your automation on the bot side. Um, and then alert, really leverage these numbers and send it out to any kind of external uh, data source. Um, I will go into the API force category and create a new process here. So let's say we call it measurements, measurements, uh, APM. And I will be doing all the different phases. Let me uncheck the process board save it and immediately i will push this one to build phase so we can start building the bot using the rpa builder so that's fine it's in build phase so now let's go into rpa builder and open this process so let me go to the repository and do a refresh we should see our measurement apm somewhere measurement apm is here oops sorry is this one let's open it and just complete the step and this activity i want to call uh, measurements apm and now we can look at the different activities we are providing here so what you will see here are the measurement points uh, which you can definitely use to send and measure interaction of uh, uh, transactions how long they take by using a stopwatch um, or general timer uh, which is also provided where, where you select at a certain step in time that you want to start the timing and at some point you can stop it again and uh, you have also the possibility to use the checkpoints uh, at, to really measure how far the script got uh, how far the process got uh, in execution when uh, there was a failure so you can define different checkpoint and uh, place it in your workflow um, today we are going to look at the stopwatch checkpoints work in the same manner as you can see it has also a checkpoint collection similar to the stopwatch connection so we are going to measure this, uh, the timing of a website so let's say we want to measure the time from mulesoft.com and uh, timer mode is last this is fine and here within this transaction i would like to uh, use the run program i could start it using the browser but I want to do it here with run program and get the Chrome executable here on the file name um, and provide also the website URL. Let me test it. Looks good. So let's say we want to check this um, as well. I would like to let's see here we just say this is the um, browser and after this i just want to do a simple image search check and checking on the mulesoft logo image search logo just put it as small as possible like this one this should be enough that I should be able to run it so let's say that's fine we go so now let's add uh, the checkpoint uh, collections here um, just to or stopwatch collections just to get 
the number and metric from it. So we have stopwatch collection and you can see I cannot add it in the activity workflow because this is something which I need in the workflow finalization um, and only there I can add it. So I will just do the common finalization here, add it here and when I open the collection you can see this is showing me ex actually what I have here in my first uh, active workflow. If I would have two stopwatches, it will show me two stopwatches. So the name is the name of something what I want to uh, measure. The value is the timer. Uh, it, so the duration of the process within the stopwatch, um, if it was reached true or false or touched time as well. So this is something we are going to look at what these numbers mean and how to extract those. As you can see, it is a JSON format. So I will just need to uh, use the JSON query here. Um, and in order to use the JSON query, what I will do is I will go into the JSON query definition or JSON pass uh, evaluator. I can add here the full query and now let me add here the different index to find the nodes I'm looking for. So you can see zero is uh, the index uh, of the array where I get the first item and let's apply it here in our active workflow. So I will go into JSON query, not in the active workflow, in the finalization. And after the stopwatch, I will add here the JSON query and the JSON object is something I get from the stopwatch collection. And the first expression is I want to get the name. So get name, do the same for the other ones. So this will be the value, value as well. Then we have reached and finally we had touched. So what I need to do now is let's see what is inside these values. So I need a message box or let's go with yeah, message box is enough. Message box and just pin the different items there. So I will use it three times. The first one is for the name, name, and here we get it correctly. Then we have name itself, first item. The second one is the value, 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 first item. Same we do with reached reach the title and this is the first item and the last one of course is touched um, touched touched and this item for touched okay so let's run this workflow and see what we get so it will execute launch uh, okay so the website was already open so you can see it continued immediately so this was the timing and i get, got also the uh, time uh, range when it was reached at that specific point let me cl close the browser and let's redo so we get uh, real numbers here so let's run so now it will open the website and wait for the site to appear two seconds it took it was reached and this is the timestamp. So that's some data which I could potentially use for my, uh, for my measurements. So now in order to do the measurements, what I need to do is I need to feed in this data, which you saw with the uh, message box into Elastic. So let's set up our Elastic index. In Elastic, I need to go here into my content. So what I did, I created a new trial in Elastic 
and um, then created my indexes and fed it with the number uh, of documents. Uh, you can see here, I tried a few things. However, now let's create a new index, which will be a API uh, specific uh, feed. So we are going to feed in using API. And this is the demo for APM. Uh, this is fine, create index. And what I also need to do, it will show me exactly what I need to do in order to feed and ingest data into that index. Uh, it's preparing everything for me. This is completely fine. Um, I need to create an API key to access this index. So let's say demo APM, we call it. Generate API key, copy it. And now what I can do is I can go into my uh, postman and write in here the data is search demo apm in my api key here send and i should get a json which would tell me it is working so this is fine so my api key and i can access the elastic index via postman so this is promising and let's continue with this now in our uh, rpa bot so i need to do a call a post call on that url to feed in data so let's see how we do it back in rpa builder we need to use the rest api template the rest call put it here and in the rest call before i go in i will map the data so a can be replaced with name we have b for value c is the timestamp which is touched and we have reached is true or false like this this is fine and now i can name here send data to elastic uh, i need a post and now I can copy the data here. Um, this is fine. The URL is entered. I can define here my JSON, which I would like to start with. App would be the name parameter here. Then we have the value. And value is then the duration it took to load. So this is here, the value. Then we have the reached so if this stopwatch was reached yes and finally we can say timestamp time stamp and this is touched and i additionally need to add two parameters one is the authorization with my api key so let's say this one and additionally let me see if it's fine content type which should be application json cross check content type this is fine so let's say that's good and now save it let it run again it was quite fast because i did not close the browser so one would be super fast time let's do it again by closing the browser so that's uh, the second call so i should see two documents you can see here we have now two documents we can also look into the documents the first one was really super fast the second one was normal behavior two seconds to load uh, where i could capture it um, let's see let's run mo one more time and uh, then we are going to build the report so let's run it here again okay so we should have now three let me press here and you can see the timing is more accurate here so the next thing what i need to do is to build a dashboard and before i build the dashboard i need to uh, build a data view for my uh, index here so let's do that and i guess this was the dashboard itself if i would like to uh, 
share this or save this dashboard as save as new demo is fine and in the new demo i'm going to change it now to a new configuration and for the configuration you can see these are all my data views so i need to create a new data view for my new index which i have here this is the demo apm i can write it here and it will find the timestamp which i added um, save this to kibana this is fine data view is saved let's say the last last 15 minutes and it is showing me here a few things so selected fields i have timestamp and i have here the cell value so far it looks good and here i need to also switch to search demo apm i think this was the one and now let's drop in here our matrix so we have here the cell value you can see these two items which i had uh, or meanwhile it's three yeah three documents um three measurements we had then we have the application is mulesoft and the timestamp so let's feed in and see how this can be further used so let let me just deploy this simple bot i will upload everything let's say this is v1 upload upload should be done now and from now on i can go into rpa manager refresh the page let's refresh here and move it to test i'm not going to test it we are just going to deploy it into production and let's feed in our uh, dashboard there or this simple graph which i had um, i'm going to create a normal uh, configuration let's say every three minutes this is fine let's walk through no parameters no user task it is good as secure session process trigger should be today let's say all day uh, tomorrow repeat every two minutes so we have more data and that should be fine that's good create schedule name is every two minutes then let's say two minutes go next and i will now create few bots so let's say this is a valid bot i have here bots and let's deploy it on a couple of those so we can see if something is uh, reported so that's fine save it now we can deploy the bot itself deploy it we can see bots in the selection so now, while the bot is being deployed, let me also activate here and say the data is refreshed every 30 seconds. So we see something happening here. And the thresholds are fine. I think it should be always green in our case. Otherwise, we can also configure it to be more on the red side. But let's see in MuleSoft RPA, if we are already receiving some timings, so update. Now we can see the first has started to run on first machine. Now all three are running, one success. So we should be seeing data here coming in. And as we go, it will refresh and feed in this data on that specific uh, chart um, and just refresh it. Let's see few more and then we can continue and save this chart so six seven measurements and you can see it's happening right now nine measurements so that's good save and close and with that approach you can now continue on all other um, matrix and build and link the right uh, data view so you get your um, reports and dashboards as you need so my dashboard is this one let's go here and here we see some data
uh, these bots have been undeployed. It was just for demo purposes. So that's how you would build uh, reports and dashboards for APM using the MuleSoft RPA bots.